community close to development, but still quite far from it. A bundle of history, but burdened by underdevelopment. This is the story of Oshogu in Oyo State. The road leading into Oshogu in Isei local government area is untarred and is in need of urgent rehabilitation. Recently graded through community effort, it's just a matter of time before the portos that characterize the red earth for most of the year appear. The inner roads in the community are not any better. There are no drainage systems and erosion is gradually creeping in. Very few people know about this community. In 1821, slave raiders invaded Oshogu and sacked the whole village. The whole community was on fire. Its sons, daughters were ferried off to be sold into slavery. And from here, the fateful and eventful journey of one of its sons, Samuel Ajayi Crowder, the first African Anglican bishop in Nigeria, began. Ajayi Crowder was born about the year 1810. He was captured in this town in the year 1821. He was the first person who struggled to see that uh, the word of God spread in Nigeria. Holding such a rich history, and many decades later, Oshogu is still trapped in the web of underdevelopment. Many wonder why the town is still in this state after many years. Everything stands still. The signs of neglect are everywhere. <coughs> Under the sun and in the rain, dusty but still standing, is a black life-size statue of the late Bishop Ajayi Crowder, wearing a cassock and holding a Bible. He was the first African Anglican bishop in Nigeria and he was the man who translated the English Bible into the Yoruba language. Now surrounded by weeds, the statue has indeed seen better days. Apart from this statue which stands right in the heart of the town, there is nothing else that depicts that Oshogun is the birthplace of the foremost bishop. His family house is nothing more than a piece of evidence. The mob brick house lies in ruins. Where it was captured is now so close to Mother Earth, and it is bordered by a few blocks and a roof to signify where it once called home. The big baobab tree holds another history. In the year that Bishop Crowder was captured, he and all the captives were tied to this tree before they were sold into slavery. Decades later, the tree is still standing, with its branches flourishing, but all these have not been developed to become tourism sites for a story that ultimately puts Nigeria on the world map. Osogun is a, an historical town that ought not to have been neglected like that. And so that area also requires development. It's a historical monument. And we are calling on both states and federal governments to please address this area, do that. Even the uh, internal generated revenue of the state can be boosted and tourism can be promoted, these slides. And this can even assist in minimizing this urban rural migration. As with most rural communities, agriculture plays a crucial role. Many of Oshogo indigens are farmers but frequent clashes between farmers and herders is now threatening food security. Many 
iye yo wu teyan ri kona sibe opolopo awon eniyan do si je wi pe won lo sinu oko ti won di alakero wale to je pe won a sha won logbe nu kan se lomi lada lori nu kan sha lada lese won pa opolopo sinu oko aro ijoba apapo papa julo joba ipinle wa ti ijoba ibile wa awon na sumo wa kun o da kun ki won o je ki ipade fulani ati bororo ati awon agbe ko ma wa leyi to bi je bi pe asoye po ma wa electricity is still a mirage despite the power installations present all over the town residents have to line up their kegs to buy fuel for their generating sets when there is no light they have told in this transformer away since about 6 months we didn't get any light here we are just sleeping under the darkness we beg the government to come to our aid it is time to, to come to our aid they should not neglect us bishop ajay crowder memorial high school is in a bad state apart from the clean sign post there is nothing else the school lacks perimeter fencing and weeds were all over when we visited. The school has just one block of classrooms. The very old building with wooden doors and windows needs a makeover befitting of a citizen of learning that it should be. O wa nbe fun rara won to je pe won fo ro ara won se sugar ki joba oran wa lowo ka won ni o ba gbe soke ke won ba ke won ba ko omi si It is very lonely in this compound a silent as a graveyard This building houses the Bishop of Jai Crowd the Maternity Center put together by a number of Anglican women for the community's use The chairs for patients to seat as the wage to be attended to are there. Dusty, but where are the people? It was locked when we visited. No doctors, no nurses, no patients. Just a few birds around. Residents have to go several miles from the community for quality health care. The building looks very rough, with old fluorescent stands for illumination bird and termite nests adorn the walls. We could only see cobwebs and cracks on the walls and ceilings. Pipes are peeping out and towards the back of the building are missing lower blades. More cobwebs and dangling wires. A rusty water tank now lies on the septic tank near the weeds which have now become a home for rodents and reptiles. Other structures in the compound are not different. Some are about to be swallowed by weeds and trees. I want to say Luguye, I won't be a young Lika, I only want to say Luguye, but I don't want to say that. I 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 want to say that. Baba fe bi mo ni si tabi nkan kan ba sele inu ka ma lo adua wa ye ka ma lo seyin ibarapa lo se rin ni ni ngba mi ke lo mi ka to gbe lo mi de be yo ti ku Oshogun's young and old are living their lives in this quiet part of the state hoping that Ajay Crowder's name and legacies will be enough to lift them out of misery and put the community on the tourism map in years to come Taking view of green landscape covered in dew from its majestic rock formations. This is Adwawaye, 
a community 20 kilometers west of a same town in Oyo State. From the top of a hill is a beautiful view of houses, trees and road networks that link other communities. The mountain overlooks the community like a fortress. Adwa Waye is a tourist delight, but it hasn't been positioned rightly to attract investment. In this work of nature lies one of the Earth's wonders. Adwa Waye mountain is where we are. our ancient forefathers settled before they came down to the land here. They are residing at the top before. So we have so many things on the hill there. We decided to visit to see why the government should pay more attention to its tourism potential. This is the signpost meant to direct visitors to a natural wonder, a suspended lake. The three by four inch blue and white signpost standing and surrounded by a colony of weeds has sure seen better days. It is not befitting for a tourist attraction of this sort. The people of Adwa Waye believe that there are 16 gods of the Ado mountain and they are embedded in each of the attractions lined up on the mountain. A narrow footpath leads to the foot of the mountain we were given hiking sticks for the journey ahead. The road to the mountain is lined with so many weeds. We started ascending the hill through more than 350 steep man-made steps that lead up to the mountain. The state government began constructing the stairs up the mountain around the year 2000 but the project has since been stalled. The concrete has now washed out and there are no railings to aid climbing. It takes the calculative speed of a snail to climb up as the steps shrunk as we continued ascending. One of the first side attractions on the hill is the Ishagi Rock a lone formation which maintains its shape without any support. It has managed to stay on its own for hundreds of years without falling. It's a collage of depressions scattered on a part of the hill. By now we had a clear view of the lush landscape. Below almost meeting with the clouds, it remains beautifully green throughout the year. The journey continued upwards. It is indeed a test of resilience and strength. Gasping for breath and breaking sweats. By now, we were able to get a clear view of other eels and the community 
as far as the border with the Republic of Bene. For some, climbing the hill has become easy for them. By now, tiredness had crept in, but the termination was stronger. The whole area is bordered by trees and weeds. We eventually got to the Iyake Suspended Lake. A beautiful body of water right on top of the hill. It is the only one of its kind in Africa. There are only two hanging lakes in the world, the Ado Hawaii Lake and the Suspended Lake in Colorado, USA. While the Suspended Lake in the USA has moved on to become a popular site, receiving a minimum of 131 tourists annually, the one at Ado Hawaii is not really popular and is waiting for development. No one knows the origin of the clear greenish looking beautiful lake decorated with a number of roots. Indigens say it has the purest of waters and people take water from the hill with the belief that it has spiritual significance. Historical events have been said to draw the attention of tourists from around the world to Nigeria. But what happens to the places that are being considered the wonders of the world that we live in? This is a sport in your states that should be contributing a lot to the tourism sector in Nigeria. Environmentalists say the lake is in need of perimeter fencing to guide against accidents and to prevent pollution. The water there is not ordinary water. We drink it. After you need, if you need something or you have any problem, if you take that water and you pray to it, God accepts the prayer through that water. Water cannot go in there or go out just stable like that. And if you fetch, it won't give any sign that you take uh, anything from it. Few meters away from the lake is a small hole filled with water. Legend has it that this small hole called Agbomofunyaki has a link to the Yaki Lake. Indigenous believe that whatever goes into this hole will appear in the suspended lake. The hill is never empty as people actually camp here. The very aged, middle-aged, young, kids and even tots. Some people get wood to make fire while others with their load on their head trip to another part of the hill. There is a belief about this hill as Christians, Muslims and traditionalists come here frequently to seek the face of God. Many other activities like cooking take place here. People also come here to relax, experience the fresh breeze atop the hill, appreciate nature in its purest form and pray. Keeping up with the world is also possible as people listen to the radio to catch up with trends in the world of sports. This is another attraction on the hill, the elephant tree, a structure of intertwined tree branches and roots. It has a trunk and even has eyes. Another part of the mountain called the verge of death is very slopey. Climbing the Ado Awayo mountain is a rather difficult task, but it's very interesting. And so for the bravest, the strongest, of which I'm one of them, <laughs> we get to inscribe our names on the wall 
of the mountain to show that yes indeed we are close to the top of the mountain The king of the town, in conjunction with other individuals, thought it wise to construct this wooden staircase. But the plank bridge needs urgent rehabilitation. This is how we descend through the staircase. And so we ended the conquest by reaching the peak of the hill. Since all this day, government is aware during the uh, Lama additional regime, the government tried their best. That is where they are putting the staircase, thinking that because it's a place where we can make our own, where we can make more money than the people in the town to even thought they developed the place. But one way or the other, I don't think they are not catered for the place. But it's a tourism whereby you cannot compare it with a uh, Ulumo rocks. Being the modernized Ulumo rock, you see how much they are making there every day. So we are calling the government if they can come here, you know. People in Adua Waye, we are farmers. Then we are calling the government to assist, to come and develop the tourism for us. The state government says plans are on the way to reform the tourism sector. And Adua Waye is not an exception. Road is very critical. You cannot do tourism without access road to those places. Luckily, the road from Okeogun connects to almost all these uh, tourist attraction points they talk about. So once the road is fixed, you know, it's not going to just affect agriculture. It's going to affect tourism also. So that's, that's uh, going to be a win-win for us. And we're going to do that. And we're going to get the road fixed. And we're going to also lift um, the standard of focus on tourism. You know, a lot of people don't understand that tourism amounts to money. So we're going to get the road fixed in a, a very short while. And once we do that, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot connecting a lot of things. Tourism, agri, economy, all entangled. The Okeado Mountain is a sleeping giant waiting for the government to unbundle what nature has deposited in it. Perhaps the lives of its indigents could be better for it.